Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here. Welcome back. Uh, we're heading into episode two now of Orwell, and uh, there's a lot that's happened. It's probably going to be too much to explain in in uh, a concise manner. I would suggest if you're at all interested in Orwell and seeing what the the story is about, uh, watch the last three episodes to get fully caught up. There's a lot going on. The web of connections is growing pretty rapidly, as you can even see in the bottom left there. Uh, if you'll notice, this is a different picture than what I had ended up with in the previous one. About five minutes into recording this, uh, I realized that I had no audio recording. And so, because of the way the game like auto-saves everything, I can't go back to the beginning of a day. So I started a new profile, and I went through the first day making the same decisions all over again uh, to get to this point. Uh, the only thing I did differently was I have a different picture here. But everything else is exactly the same as we've seen up to this point. So, let's head into uh, episode two. A place where there is no darkness. Simes is saying, welcome back. Hope you don't mind if we get started right away. We have tons of work ahead of us. It's like real life. I met with my superiors and they wish to continue with the test case. They believe in the capability of Orwell to handle this. Oh, well, and you of course. My superiors agree with me. Based on the information you've already extracted, the activist group known as Thought is worth investigating. It seems that this Goldfells is an important member of Thought, so we now have clearance to consider him as a target person. Now that Goldfells is a target person, there may be new data chunks available in documents you have already accessed. Don't forget to go back and recheck your sources. Okay. So, now we understand that they have to be a target person before we can start gathering information on them. Um, so, let's look into our reader here. There's probably a couple of things. If we go back to his user page, we can at least upload a photo for sure. Uh, do we? I don't think we have his name, do we? We've got an entry here from him. This is the... Um, that folk song, that German folk song. So he's mentioning this here, so let's put that into his profile. Yeah, the letter, we're right it seems, for sure. When I was still young, long before I immigrated... Okay, so he was a German immigrant. He joined, or he came to the nation in 93. Let's gather that. An immigrant, hmm. Okay, Symes. Cool it. Cool it. Um, he says here that he is the creator of a blog called The Thought, which we know already, but let's add it to the database now that we have him. The Thought is an activist group with the same name as this blog. Well, yeah. Um, now, I don't know if we have confirmation that he is involved with Thought the Group outside of the blog. I think he... I think we do. If Goldfell is the one who created the blog, perhaps he founded or even was a leader of the activist group. Absolutely. Okay, what do we got here? So we've got an update on Cassandra. Uh, she was charged with assault on a police officer. Um, the suspect was arrested in her flat. She willingly opened the door and cooperated with the arresting officer after having the warrant announced and her rights read to her. So this is because of all the information we gathered. Uh, we listened in or I guess viewed a text message conversation that she was having. And within that, we had found out that she uh, admitted to assaulting that officer. Um, was unclear is like the motivation a little bit. So the person she was talking to was, was kind of reassuring her, being like, yeah, you, but you did it to help me. You did it to, to save your friend who was going to get hurt. And she was like, yeah, but I still snapped. It was still bad. You know what I mean? So um, the fact is she did it and she got arrested for it because she was previously acquitted of all charges because there was no evidence found against her. So uh, yeah, be careful what you put in your text messages. Uh, there was another explosion that happened, um, and it happened while she was arrested, so we know that she's at least not involved with the second one, which means she may not be involved with the first one, but we don't really know. And this happened at uh, Stelligan University. So, two people died. Do we know who it is? They got the letter again from that German folk song, which he has in his blog. Uh, some of the stuff that we've already seen, I'm not going to reread. Um, we're just going back to gather information from his profile. Anything that's new will obviously be reading. Uh, so now there's connections between Bonton bombings. 
Um, the bombing that occurred yesterday at Stelgan University seems to be connected to the attack against the Freedom Plaza earlier this week. Um, this is the conclusion of the police division who is investigating the cases. In both assaults, a similar, a similar explosive device created with pure malevolence appeared to have been used. Police spokeswoman Steele said. I kind of said that all weird. Uh, the letters received prior to the assault seem to support the suspicion, while their meaning is still puzzling investigators. According to rumors, people have been theorizing the number of stanzas might represent the number of bombings, which in turn raises the question whether there might be another bombing yet to occur. What? How would people reach that conclusion? Just because there's three stanzas doesn't... How is... I mean, that's kind of a weird jump. You, you could argue the same. It's like, there's... 14 sentences, maybe there'll be 14 bombings. It's like, okay. We understand that some people jump to this conclusion, but there's no good reason to believe this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Steele answered when confronted with this theory during a press conference. Meanwhile, Stelgan University has declared that normal operation cannot continue under these circumstances, so they'll be closing their doors for the time being. The university has also put up a special front page to pay their respects to the assault victims. See above image. Okay. Um... What other headlines do we have? Timelines and Rosen announce cooperation. It's a big deal. The internet billionaire siblings, Ada and Alan da Davenport, creators and owners of the most important online social network, Timelines, located in Hillbury, are starting a major cooperation with the Bonton software giant Rosen Technologies. This has been announced in a press statement given out on Friday by the PR departments of both companies simultaneously. By utilizing the existing infrastructure and software development capacities of Rosentech, Timelines will be able to respond to the needs and requirements of the quickly changing digital world in real time. Timelines executive Ada De Davenport is quoted, Our growing user base will profit from this by significantly reducing downtimes, tightened security, and a sped up integration of new features. Okay. More headlines. What else is in here? Heavy rainstorms expected for the weekend? Bonton and Fairview, as well as large parts of the Western nation, will be covered in heavy rain clouds culminating on Sunday. If you had any plans for the weekend involving the outdoors in Bonton or Fairview, you'd best forget about them. There's a massive low pressure system incoming, bringing with it storm clouds and rain to the nation's west. Sunday morning will be hit with the hardest, uh, will be hit the hardest until the late afternoon. So make sure you pack an umbrella if you need to go outside, lest you become a sopping mess. There's a literal silver lining on the horizon, however. Over the coming week, the cloud will move on and temperatures will stabilize at comfy levels. After a long and harsh winter, spring will, spring will finally win the upper hand. Okay. So now we can go into some of his other entries, apparently. Um, I am, in fact, going to go into the listener, though, and see what we're... Oh, nice. We've got a conversation between her and Joseph. Now, Joseph, if you don't remember, is her attorney, but she's also dating him keeping it a secret from her parents. So, yeah. Hey, you. I guess she's arrested. Is she, I don't think she's gonna be getting this. Sorry about last night, I really should have come over. He had something come up, some appointment that he couldn't miss, but she didn't know about, so kind of weird. It's just that this client is massively influential and could bring a whole lot of exposure to the office. I've been trying to get a meeting for months and it went rather well, so here's hoping. God, I'm such a stupid old man who just talks about his job too much. I'm sorry, it's just such a big part of my life. Hello? Are you still upset? Cassie, can you at least answer me? If you don't, I'll start to worry. You know what I'm like. Does that mean you know what I'm like? He's a worry wart or, or worse? This is kind of a sketchy situation. Somebody that like that dates his clients and it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Okay, we do have an entry here um, for Goldfells. Thought must change direction. I thoroughly believe we were able to capture minds if only we could garner attention on thought group, on thought as a group and what we stand for. It seems my ambition was once again too much. After one and a half years recruiting two of my students and arranging three demonstrations like the one held at Freedom Plaza, I feel obliged to ask myself where we stand. Have we reached our goal? What's been sacrificed along the way? In short, 
Are we true to the initial goal to form this group? So we know that he had three demonstrations. We only know of two, or well, there were definitely terrorist attacks at two. Well, no, wait, that's not true either. Uh, there weren't terrorist attacks at the demonstrations. Right? No, those are separate events. Let's upload this. Three demonstrations, more interesting that uh, might be that two students seem to be involved. We'll have to dig into them. So the question is, in short, are we true to the initial goal that formed the group? Frankly and sadly, the answer to the, to the latter is a resounding no. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred towards those we thought to do us wrong. Thoughts are free, but that does in no way mean that they can attack and do whatever they wish instead of blaming others. I now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. More than anyone else have thought, I feel responsible. So these are probably... Yeah. So this is going to update his file saying he reacts with hatred and anger about troubled past of thought. Hinted at a troubled past of thought. And then here... Feels responsible for the troubled past. Hinted at troubled past of thought. And this is in fact the conflict. So... Um, if this is the first time you're uh, catching Orwell, you have to decide which one you're going to upload to the government to check or to have access to. And because it's kind of conflicting information, the way that he's reacting to this, um, we need to decide what the government sees. So this is saying we let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred to the, towards those we thought to do us wrong. And this will clarify him as reacting with hatred and anger about troubled passive thought. I don't know if that necessarily says that. Whereas here it says, I now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. More than anyone else have thought, I feel responsible. I'm leaning more towards that one, and I'm saying so because he's not saying I am responsible. He's just saying I can't help but feel responsible. Like I started this this blog and this movement and this group and all that. So how could he not, right? I think we're going to go with this. As a consequence, I will halt. Oh, hold on. A troubled past. We'll have to get to the bottom of this. As a consequence, I will halt my active engagement in this group. I firmly believe that it shall be for the better of everyone involved, especially my students from Stelligan. Now this is interesting. I wonder what would happen if we didn't upload this, that he's no longer involved. What is active engagement? If we held that back, the government would still think that he's involved. So if we wanted to like maybe try to pin it on him, we probably could. That would be interesting. But um, I'm trying to be objective, as objective as I can. So let's not try to manipulate it. Um, He's saying that he's halting active agreement or active engagement in this group. So there's that. Whatever active engagement means, still an interesting fact. Exactly. And then, I firmly believe it shall be for the better of everyone involved, especially my students from Stelligan. Oh. Stelligan was the, um, that's the second, that's where the second attack took place. Okay. The name Stelligan where a bomb just exploded? Absolutely. You know what I think about coincidences? I won't repeat it. Uh, Symes does not believe in coincidences, by the way. So far, the evidence suggests that Goldfells was a prominent lecturer at Stelligan, and some of his students became involved in thought. Did he, like, recruit them for his cause? We need to identify those students and see who else is involved with the group. So when was this? This is in July of 2016. And... Hold on a second. Let's read the comments first, but... Concerned One wrote, uh, Please reconsider. Guy Hurt there was only a goddamn cop. They had it coming for long. It was messy, I know, all the way back to the thing I messed up organizing. But hell, look at the bright side. We made the news. This is what we wanted. It was what you wanted. Huh. So... This could be interpreted in a couple of ways. The way I look at it is... This guy kind of started this movement, let's call it. And people started following his blog and believing in what he has to say, and then they formed this group. 
And when he, when this commenter says, this is what we wanted, this is what you wanted, that might not necessarily be true. Um, I think sometimes in big movements like this, people can get absorbed in it and not really focus on what the true intentions are. And they start to like, the, the intentions of the, the larger population of the group start to morph based on their past experiences and based on uh, things that they're interpreting to be true and things that they're believing in uh, and maybe even disregarding some of the things that they don't really believe in and just honing in on that one thing. And it starts to like amplify the, the tension within the group and the, the, the feeling, whatever that overarching feeling is of that group. Um, so it can kind of take things out of proportion. Uh, so this is July 2016. Now hold on a second. Cassandra's timeline. She disappeared for a while here. So here's... In, in July area, this is where she um, had to go like on trial or what have you for the assault. And then she's in a relationship with Langley, August 22nd, and then disappears till January. So roughly around the same time, this guy's saying, I'm leaving thought, or I'm not going to be an active participant or whatever. Huh. Okay. Suspect of Bonton bombings arrested. Woman arrested in connection with recent attacks in Bonton. A couple of minutes ago, the Bonton Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the capital has been made. A young woman has been brought into custody thanks to investigation efforts of a special task force, police spokesman Kaufman said. How the woman is related to the bomb attacks, Kaufman did not cover. However, it's rumored that the suspect is well known to authorities by other incidents. Well known to authorities because of the assault on the cop, I guess. But like... I guess they're assuming that that group did the terrorist attacks, right? Like, that's how the media spins things, intentionally or not. Okay, Stelligan University, continue to the main page. This is like their little, um, it said memorial? Yeah, memorial. Bomb assault at Stelligan. Uh, campus closed down until further notice. So this is April 14, that's today. Yesterday evening, an explosive device went off on Stelligan campus, killing a Stelligan student as well as a lecturer. Several other individuals have been severely injured, and the authorities are investigating. This is an unspeakable tragedy, Stelligan President Hopkins said during the press conference that took place this morning. In the light of recent events, it is impossible to maintain daily routine. That is why I have decided to suspend all educational services of Stelligan University until further notice. Therefore, Stelligan campus will remain closed at least for the rest of this week, with no educational courses or events taking place. <laughs> Stelligan Canteen elected best public dining hall in nation's best competition. The jury of the nation's best contest annually awarded to the most excellent public services has declared Stelligan's Canteen the winner in its best public dining hall category. In the recent time, we have tried to be fearless about our services and trying something new, something that just may not have worked. We are very happy to receive this honor as a direct consequence of those efforts. The student uh, service manager Gusto declared consecutively in a press statement. Okay. So now I have access to the homepage of Stelligan University. So we've got courses. Stelligan University offers prospective students courses from a broad variety of fields in which bachelor or master's degrees may be obtained. Please refer to faculty pages for a more detailed description of each course. So biotech, medicine tech, environmental tech, uh, media technics, media ethics. This course is currently unavailable due to representative Professor A. Goldfeld's having retired. Okay, so he left the school too. Bunch of different law, uh, natural and computer sciences. Courses discontinue will only accept applications until October 2017. Applied physics. Let's look at his profile, I guess. Being a luminary in his profession, Abraham Goldfels, that's his real name. Let's update this. Gladly accepted, Abraham it is, well done. 
gladly, gladly accepted the offered professorship in the field of media ethics at Stelligan, from which he sadly retired in fall of 2016. Same timeline. So he quit thought, and then he quit his job. And um, Cassandra. Um went on that like hiatus from social media for whatever reason so we're she's unaccounted for during that time this is kind of getting interesting okay let's upload this to keep track of this did you notice the bombing locations seem to be closely connected to thought members there could be a pattern emerging it's yes it's possible thought has held three demonstrations yet there have only been two bombings which might imply well, it's definitely a shot in the dark, but we absolutely need to do everything we can to prevent another attack. Take a close look at the past of each member with thought. Find out the locations of all demos they've held that might yield a hint. Okay, that's a good point. Um, happened at the plaza. Happened at the school. We don't think we know where the other demonstration happened. But that's a place that I would certainly be watching very, very closely. Previously, Professor Goldfels has held a position as a journalist at Der Reporter, one of the most renowned German daily newspapers, and was also chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. In his works, Professor Goldfels never relents to emphasize the importance of privacy over public interest. So he's obviously anti-Orwell. Okay, so he used to be a journalist. And he was a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. It's a big deal. Member of an ethical congress. Just the average run-of-the-mill terrorist trait. Yeah, not quite. Publications of significance. Privacy versus public interest. ID, ego, and selfie. An analysis of dangers and overexpressive self-representation in social media. Die Gedanken sind frei. The words are free. A modern time declaration of independence towards mass surveillance. He wrote a book titled... Isn't this the title of the poem? Maybe he borrowed the title of the poem for his book as well? To, like, hammer home the point? Yeah, he literally wrote the book. Wow, that's a lot of information on this Goldfells, yet only one other page could be indexed. Very strange indeed. I think the next course of action should be to look for other people of this thought group, like the students he mentioned. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, so we can go into home courses, Goldfelds. We've already been home. Is there more here? Oh, I guess from here we go through courses, notable alumni. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's take a break here. Um, we need to look into, we know the connection to his students. Let's see. He said he recruited two students for thought. He wrote a book titled De Gedanken sind frei, which is that, that poem that we've read. Okay, this is cool. Uh, we're gonna look into figuring out who these students are, I guess and uh, try to get some information on them. We don't really know much else about Abraham, but I don't care really about his date of birth or his address or his relationship status. I don't think that's super important. Um, the fact that he was in media ethics, he's anti-Orwell, This and all these demonstrations are suggesting as such. Uh, he's obviously, he started the thought group and all this. Um, definitely a target, so we'll see where it goes. Wish me luck, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.